Uh, we'd ask uh, everyone if they could uh, silence their cell phones at this time. Uh, once again, uh, that would be much appreciated. I mentioned last week that uh, we are to be treated by our brother Dave Kerr um, speaking today, and, and this has come to pass. I, I believe this is Dave's first um, exhortation to us, so we look forward to that. And he has uh, titled his words, Moments of Truth. And we'd ask if everyone could turn to James, the third chapter. Um, this is the reading that, that Dave has asked that we consider. So James, the third chapter. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we will receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts as great things. Behold how great a matter a, a little fire kindleth. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds, and of serpents, and of the things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse, curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things are ought not to be so. Doth a fountain set forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt and fresh. Who is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works, with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And with this, we will call upon our brother Dave, and he will exhort us on moments of truth. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me or I don't know you well enough yet, um, I am Ellie and Lydia's grandfather, one of them. That's my new title. Moments of truth. I've done some silly things in my life, and I'll give you an example. My family never went on airplanes when I was growing up, but when I was in my early 20s, the second time I went up in an airplane, I jumped out of it. Now, this is not something I want to recommend that we all go out and do. Can you imagine our Sunday school picnic activity being an ecclesial parachute jump? Neither can I. So kids, wait till you're in your 20s and you can make your own decisions. 
But as you think back on your life, no matter how young or old you are, do you recall certain moments of truth? They might be those decisions that seem to be turning points in your life, or perhaps an action or something you said that you wish you could take back. Well, let's start off by considering the dictionary definition of the phrase moment of truth. According to Merriam-Webster, it is one of the following. The final sword thrust in a bullfight, hmm, or a moment of crisis on whose outcome much of everything depends. So let's go back to the parachuting example. There was only a minor moment of worldly truth when I made the decision, wisely or not, to go sky jumping. Once I was at the place, the morning was spent learning and preparing and then practicing. We went to a barn and practiced jumping off a wood beam when the instructor taps one on the thigh. And when the real moment of truth came, in this example, you're thousands of feet in the air and it's, believe it or not, it's an almost automatic response to jump at that time. Well, this morning we hope to consider the subject of moments of truth in a spiritual sense. You can probably take the parachute example and see some parallels. We make a decision to learn, hopefully about the truth. And as our faith develops, we hope to increasingly respond in the right way at various moments in our lives, whether they be crises or not. In our ecclesia, we practice to be in the world. We practice for the kingdom in our lives, or we try to as much as possible. Hopefully, as we develop and strengthen our faith, our intermittent moments of truth become more frequent, and we become able to look back and see a life of increasing truth. Let's now consider some examples of moments of truth in Scripture. Some of these were, of course, tough choices. Certainly, Abraham offering Isaac was a moment of truth in which Abraham relied on his faith, and God provided. He provided a ram in the thicket as an answer. Another couple of examples are Daniel, not eating the royal food, as in Daniel 1, 8 through 9. Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, but asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. So it worked out when he made the right choice. Also with Daniel, the people couldn't find any corruption in him. So they get King Darius or Darius to have a decree against prayer. Daniel does the right thing at this moment of truth. He prays to his heavenly father. This causes him to end up in the lion's den, but as we know, again, his trust in God saves him. Or how about Solomon's wisdom in determining who the mother of the live child was? The king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king, and then he gave an order, cut the living child in two and give one half to one and half to the other. And we know the response. And then, of course, Christ, who uses prayer and the word at moments of temptation and challenging moments when the people who were all against him created challenges. But again, he relied on prayer and faith. Certainly another indication of how we're to respond. So speaking of us, Let's consider our lives in general. Our lives are made up when we're awake, measured in months, years, weeks, days. And the days are made up of moments. Thinking, doing, sometimes we're doing one thing, homework, but we might be thinking of what we'd rather be doing. Speaking can be or result in moments of truth. As in the reading, the, t the tongue is a powerful thing for good things and sometimes for bad. 
As we read in James 3, it's very small, like a boat rudder, but it can make great boasts and can be tough to tame. One practical solution is to try not to react, or at least right away, to have that biblical attitude of patience. If someone upsets you, I try, instead of saying or doing something, to wait and think. It's an old expression, but as a reminder, some say, if you can't say something good, then don't say anything. As we know, one short phrase or one action can cause a lot of hurt or relationship issues or get you fired from a job or even suspended from school. Holding our tongue at such a moment instead of firing back can really help both you and whomever you are thinking of saying something to. Now, I'm not saying never bring up a subject because it'll just fester, of course, but sometimes wait until you can calm down and get our heart in the right place. I know personally way back early in email that it's better to wait overnight before responding to a very upsetting email. We also know, and respond in person if you can, we also know from scripture that the tongue can cause trouble. Proverbs 12, verses 18 through 19. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Psalm 37, verse 30. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom. His tongue speaks, speaks what is just. So let us endeavor to speak humbly, act humbly, and be peacemakers, as in the reading. Not all moments are at tough times or result of them. Another example is when someone opens the door for us to speak about our faith. It's another speaking moment of truth. Are we prepared? Remember Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. I know that's much, much, much easier said than done, but that's a moment, a positive moment to prepare for and work at capturing. Other examples that can relate to our walk, moments in truth can include taking a course of action that causes you difficulty. It's not always easy being a believer. It takes sacrifices. Sometimes things we do require personal sacrifice. As an example, kids, perhaps you get invited to a birthday party. It's a sleepover on a Saturday night and everybody's going to King's Dominion early on Sunday morning. Your first reaction might be, it's only one Sunday. But maybe your parents say, you want to learn what to do at this moment of truth and suggest firmly or maybe not so firmly that it might not be popular with your friends to not go. And you might not be able to go except for the Sunday morning. You might be able to go except for that early Sunday morning portion. Maybe you meet up later. But since the Bible tells us to meet together, you're not going early might actually cause your friends and their families to say, hmm, they're really dedicated to their truth and want to know about your beliefs. Matthew 5.16 reinforces this. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. 1 Peter 2, verse 12. Having your conduct honorable among Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. And as in the reading in James 3, verse 13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, 
by deeds done and the humility that comes from wisdom. Of course, another all-important and very positive moment of truth is when you feel you're ready to make the commitment and be baptized. Some other examples from life. Perhaps you're with your school friends at the mall or somewhere and someone tries to get you to be cool or if you're cool, you're going to do this thing which you know is wrong. It's a classic example of peer pressure. Sticking to doing what you know is right, no matter what they might say to you, is an example of a moment of truth. Galatians 2 verses 4 to 5 provide an example of not giving in. This matter arose because some false brothers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. And to make us slaves, we did not give in to them for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. Other moments of truth can include when you're in a position to tell a truth, as challenging as it might be in that moment, or lie and be a hypocrite, especially challenging at certain moments. But in John, 1 John 2, verse 21, I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. When we, destruct, when we decide to try and help a struggling brother or sister, that takes courage. It's not always easy, but it's one of the reasons we're an ecclesial family to support and help one another. If it's a challenging situation, hopefully we have the strength and the energy to find a loving way to support and strengthen them. In Matthew, turning to something a little less serious, in Matthew, Matthew 23, one of the lessons is it's inside, that, which is what counts, not the outside appearance of righteousness. Well, even simply getting dressed is an opportunity. Do I want to be rever reverential or self-important or defiant? Well, I'm not w telling you what to wear, but I'm not wearing a tux this morning to uh, bring glory to myself or to try and get a lot of attention. It goes back to what's my motivation for what I do. At some moments of truth, thinking about or feeling compelled to do or say something wrong, I try and remember some things to do, like I mentioned holding my tongue. But we know, even if I hold my tongue, we know that God knows our hearts. So I, I can't just stop at, what, at not saying something bad or hurtful. I need to keep working on my heart and my thoughts, because God knows what I'm thinking, even if I don't convey it. And that goes back to my brain, it seems like I'm only, it's only able to hold but so much. So I have to work really hard at putting good stuff in to displace the bad stuff. In business, we often hear the phrase continuous improvement. Well, very applicable to our walk, of course. Our walk in the truth is about continuous improvement. We're far from perfect. We know that. We strive to think more and do more as our great example who we're here to remember the Lord Jesus did. We don't know how many moments we'll have, so let's step by step work on having positive moments of truth. When something good happens to us, perhaps related to school or work, got a great result, really good test score, is our first reaction to say, yes, I'm good. I worked for this and I deserve it. How about getting into the practice of pausing and thinking about the true source of such successes? 
And how about rules? Yeah, sometimes, depending on our age and attitude, they can be a pain. They're for order and to reduce distraction, etc. But if I focus too much on how I feel about the rules, I might be thinking too much about I. There are many moments of truth that involve decisions. Let's try to consider God's word as our example did when making decisions. In Exodus 18, verse 16, whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and laws, relying on the word. Your moments of truth can involve giving. There's another positive moment of truth. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Proverbs 29, verse 1. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. So it's really important that we learn lessons to be in a better position to make those right decisions. And speaking of decisions, key moment in your, a young person's life, if they choose to go to college or university, might be where to go. It's not a good or evil type decision, in my opinion. But faith can certainly be involved in terms of, is there a local ecclesia? And turning it over to God through prayer. Through prayer, let's increasingly strive to make decisions in line, in line with our faith. Once again, much of this comes down to the principle of submitting, which is making a sacrifice. Do I sacrifice a few minutes of my time to be a good listener? Try. Hopefully we can try more. Kids, do you work on the attribute of patience when your parents want to talk to you, even though there's probably something else you might like to be doing? When we have the opportunity to show forgiveness at a moment of truth, do we speak out in love even though we may still feel hurt? Try not to stay in the past and hold grudges so that we can move forward together in a positive way. Again, way easier said than done. At a moment of truth, are we quick to judge? Just as the, uh, the old expression of there's no I in team, can we try and think about and use the word self when we pair it with sacrifice. Instead of oneself, can I put energy into teaching, preaching, building my faith, helping the ecclesia grow, trying to be more increasingly to have a life of humble self-sacrifice. The word helps to teach us, as we've said, how to respond. We're not perfect, but it can help us be better. But if we aren't reading, we aren't learning. As Hebrews 4 has, the word helps us to be discerners of right. In conclusion, as we prepare to take the emblems and remember our great example, our Lord and Savior, in John 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life as we sang last week. No one comes to the Father except through me. But we know we're all to strive to manifest him as in as many moments of our lives as we can. These include, as said, using prayer, the word, having an attitude of humbleness. So we've shared a few stories and some potential moments of truth and maybe some approaches to try and take. The, hopes, the hope is that we take some of these thoughts as we re reach decision points and react to people in the coming week. 
with practice and faith, we can have more of our moments of truth be moments of the truth. We pray that the moments of faithful truth in thinking and in action become so frequent that looking back on our lives, we see a life of truth, as we hope our coming King will see in us upon his return. Thank you.